This is Lance and Roar, the voice of the fans. Coming up, the Premier League is back. We see how our boys in green got on on the opening weekend of the Premier League, plus a Dublin derby at 11.30 in the morning. It's going to happen. And Big Jack's lad talks Ireland and England in September. It's Lance and Roar. Hello and welcome to another episode of Lance and Roar. David Dunn here flying solo. No, Martin, he is away on holiday. Um, again, um, <laughs> He seems to be to be the only one out of the two of us that gets holiday. But there you go, them's the breaks. Um, yeah, you're very welcome. And um, before we get started, I uh, just want to, you know, do a bit of a shameless plugging, as always. Uh, if you could just scan that QR code, please. Do it now. Thank you. And uh, you can head over to our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and our YouTube channel if you're not watching us on YouTube. And if you want opinion head over to lanceandroar.ie. That is lanceandroar.ie. It does help, by the way, a cheeky subscribe on the uh, YouTube channel. We have surpassed a 1,000 subscribers. We're just trying to grow it, you know? We, we just we just want to be there. We want to be influencers. <laughs> no, not really. Um, good. Um, and, and also, actually, new feature as well. If you look in the link below this video, uh, you can buy us a coffee. Yes, support the page. Buy us a coffee. It's actually coffee, K-O-F-I. Uh, yeah, if you if you want, there's no pressure. We are free, by the way. But if you want to help support the page, there is a link down below, um, and it's K-O-F-I. And you can just click on that if you want to throw us a few quid. That'd be greatly appreciated. You don't have to, obviously. You know, I'll just you know, we're, we're not going to do a what a, a different uh, podcast. Irish football po sports podcast did uh, <clears throat> a few months ago. We're not going to start charging a subscription, but just just be nice if you could do that anyway. Anyway, you don't have to. Right, let's get on with it. Um, it was the opening weekend of the Premier League, and I just thought I'd have a little look at see how our lads got on. And, uh, well, I know the Ireland manager's name is Halgrim. Um and it pretty was grim, actually, uh, to be honest. Sorry, my attention. There he is there. I was looking for a photograph of him. Uh, Heimer Halgrimson. Well, it was grim. It was very grim this weekend. Now, you don't have your little ray of sunshine, Mark Prendergast, um, the delusional, poor delusional bastard that he is, um, to try and put a positive spin on this. Uh, let's be honest, it wasn't great. Um, now, I'm not going to go through how... Um, all of our squad and our fringe players, the whole our boys in green thing that we do, that will be coming out late Monday. Uh, late Monday night, that should be coming out. And we go through all the players, um, the the last, the entire last squad and a few fringe players. And there's a few more players added um, to that because we had the first episode last week. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, our boys in green. And uh, yeah, it'll evolve and grow. But anyway, I digress. Uh, I'm going to talk about the players have played or didn't play. Um, I play for are assigned to Premier League clubs because not a lot of them were playing. Um, I'm going to get on with the goalkeepers now. Our three goalkeepers, uh, Queefing Gallagher, Gavin Bazuni, Mark Travers, they all play in the Premier League. They, they are assigned to Premier League clubs. However, none of them played over the weekend. Now, Gavin Bazuni, who's Southampton, by the way, um, is injured. And I heard a whisper. I don't know how true it is. But he is supposed he might be out until uh, Christmas. So that's worrying. Uh, Quiven Keller, as I mentioned, Liverpool sat on the bench. Uh, Liverpool won 2 0 against Ipswich Town. And yeah, I mean, same again. We, we were hoping he was going to get a move away. Look, I'm a Liverpool supporter, but at the end of the day, I what is what is best for him. And, you know, he's 25 now, he needs a move away from Liverpool. There's no point in sitting on the bench warming that bench. What else are you going to learn? You're 25. You need to be out. You need to be getting minutes. Um, when he normally plays for Ireland, other than the last little run he had, when he was actually uh, Liverpool's... He was the uh, standing number one, wasn't he? When Alisson was injured for a fair chunk of last year. And he did quite well, actually. I had a bit of a wobble against United, but he did okay. And when he played for Ireland, he was very good. He 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 was sharp. Normally, when he plays for Ireland, he's you know he's not sharp because he's normally sitting on the bench for his club, and that's the problem. 
and he hasn't got a move. He's 25 and he's still there and he, he needs to get a move. Is it going to be a case for him where um, is a bit of Darren Gibson going on? I hope not where, you know, Trapattoni was telling at the time, Gibson, you look, you're a Man United player, but you got to move. You're not getting game time. But Gibson was like, well, I'm a Man United. I'm the best club in the world. Yeah, but you're not playing. It gets to a point you can learn. You can learn, obviously, in your formative years. But you're 25. you got to be playing. You've just got to be playing. It's as simple as that. Um, and I'm, I'm very disappointed. I, You know, he said all the right things. Yeah, i got to move away. And he just hasn't. Now, there's a new manager there, Arnie Slot. He seems to be a fan of Gallagher. But let's be honest, it's just going to be the Cup games again and maybe FA Cup games. And Alisson, he's one of the best goalkeepers in the world. There's no shame in being number two to him with your club, but not when when you need to be out there, and not when you're 25. And these are the these are the, the best years of your life. Now you're entering that period where you should be a number one somewhere. Um, so very disappointing there. He's not going to play a lot unless Alisson gets injured again. Uh, Mark Travers is the other Premier League, Premier League goalkeeper. He's a Bournemouth goalkeeper. And unfortunately, his nemesis, Neto, as keeping him out of the team again. And yeah, same as over the weekend, just sitting on the bench. And I mean, I feel sorry for Mark Travers because he did have a loan move at Stoke last season and was cut short because the backup to Neto uh, was injured. So they recalled him and he was doing very well at Stoke as well in the championship. So um, when it comes to September, there's a very good chance because it's going to be those, well, Maybe not Pazunu, actually, but I don't know what the story is. I've heard, as I said, I've heard a whisper that he's out to Christmas, but I, I need to have that kind of verified before I can say anything. Um, but it's a good chance that he could have he could have a goalkeeper that's not playing uh, regular football because he's probably going to go with Gallagher. This is the Iron manager, and uh, there's a very good chance that we're going to have a guy in between the sticks that hasn't played, probably hasn't played a single game in the season. Um, so that, that's a worry. Going into the defence, uh, we'll start with Seamus Coleman, the man- uh, manager, uh, maybe in a few years' time. The captain, uh, he is injured. He didn't play in Everton's hammering at the hands of Brighton over the weekend, nor did his teammate Jake O'Brien, uh, left on the bench as an unused sub. You paid all that money and you play Michael Keane instead. Um, that did not go down well on uh, Twitter. There was a lot of memes about, um, not not Jake O'Brien, but about Michael Keane. Like, why are you playing this guy? Um, but there you go. He hasn't played. Hopefully now, because he got a bit of a pasting, that uh, he will get an opportunity now in the next game. Because you know the pressure's going to be on with Sean Dyche uh, for him at Everton. I mean, Brighton are a decent side. Obviously, they've a new manager themselves, but you know. 3-0, first day, not great. Uh, Matt Doherty did play 90 minutes in a 2-0 loss to Arsenal. No shame in that. Um, he's 32 now. Uh, he's knocking on a bit, Matt Doherty, but uh, apparently started quite well, played well, didn't see the game, but he did play okay. Um, Andrew Amabamadeli, Nottingham Forest, just sat on the bench, just sat on the bench, and that's what he's going to do probably for a great, for a, a large chunk. That's another worry. He's 22. Um, He's younger than Jacob Bryan, actually. He's 23. But Andrew Amabama Deli, 22, sitting on the bench, really should be playing somewhere. He's not allowed as a quality player. Just needs a run of games. Will he get it at Nottingham Forest? Probably not. Bit of a basket case of a club. Um, uh, obviously, now Nathan Collins played on Sunday and had a very, very good uh, shift in there. Uh, made a lot of tackles, a lot of blocks. And they beat Crystal Palace... 2-1, and he did okay. Fair enough, and we expect that when with, with Nathan Collins. Uh, Ryan Manning, Southampton, didn't not in, in the squad, probably not going to play, doesn't really feature, I don't think. Um, yet again, that's going, going to be another worry there for us, especially a left-back. Um, you know, he, I'd expect to see a championship loan there somewhere. Uh, we move it to the midfield, and we don't have from the last squad, sorry, one player from the last squad plays in the Premier League, and that is Mr. Will Smallbone. He had 90 minutes in a 1-0 loss to Newcastle, 24 years of age, uh, young lad, cousin Will from Basingstoke, and he's our only squad member, well, our only player from the last squad, who's a midfielder who plays in 
the Premier League. And he's a very talented young man and hopefully he does well. But obviously Southampton are, you know, they are brand new. Might be a bit of cannon fodder there. They've just been promoted. Um, Who knows? We'll, we'll have to see how that goes. And will they be able to play a young lad like Will Smallbone in midfield? I'm not too sure. That is often the case, isn't it? When a manager panics and blames it on the young players. Um, Marcus Harness, actually. Interesting one here. Um, a midfielder for Ipswich Town. And, of course, he played in the 2 0 loss uh, to Liverpool as well. He came on for 25 minutes. They're, you know, they had a decent first half. Ipswich, Liverpool are very poor. Then slot bollocked the team and all of a sudden they started playing and uh, it, it, it went very well. And it, it was basically just played more direct, be more clop. That was it, really. <laughs> Um, now, here's a lad who had interest with the Republic of Ireland all the way back to 2019, five years ago, when he would have been 23, um, when I was doing a bit of research on him. I didn't know it went back that far. Now, I remember Kenny brought him over to one of the games um, a couple of years ago. So he ha he is Irish. Like, he is registered as an Ireland player. Uh, he brought him over. He'd registered his papers, I believe, and he sort of brought him around uh, Lansdowne Road. And he just hasn't featured since, but he is now a Premier League player. Uh, gone from a League One player uh, all the way to a Premier League player very, very quickly. And fair play to him. Um, but yeah, that, that's it, really. It's just Will Smallbone and Marcus Harness uh, that I can see at the moment. I probably am making a mistake. And by the way, if I have left somebody out, please feel free to lash it in the comments. Um, respectfully, of course. Um, yeah, and then you can... And we'll add it next week, I suppose. Uh, and we look to the forwards. Sammy Smodix, brand new signing um, for Ipswich, of course, £9 million. He played 26 minutes in that 2 0 loss to uh, Liverpool. Um, him, himself and Tom Cannon, who is yet to play his first game at the time of recording. Um, will he be in the Leicester City squad? I do not know. Will he play? God knows if he'll play. I think it's Tottenham. Um, is the first game 21 year old from Liverpool, and uh, yeah, it's just himself and Sammy Smodix who are in the Premier League that were in the last squad. And of course, the only other player that I can see there that is Premier League uh, and is a forward, of course, is Evan Ferguson who is back in training. That's another uh worry there for the manager. Uh, we really want this guy back if he's only back in training now. And it's less than a month ago. I'd imagine he won't be 100% uh, fit when he goes back. Hopefully, he'll be available for uh, for Ireland. Um, if he is, we don't know. But um, it's not great. So, not so much match of the day for um, Heimer. Or championship highlights on Sky. Uh, or wherever you get them. I don't, know. I don't even know where you get them anymore. I, used to, I remember when he used to be uh, match of the day. Followed by the league show and a few cans. Bosh. Fantastic stuff. So that's the Premier League roundup. And I did say, folks, it wasn't going to be pretty, and it's not. And it is a worry that a lot of our players. Now, of course, another potential player uh, that could be making his way to the Premier League is our uh, return to the Premier League is Dar O'Shea. Uh, he's they've had a cracking start, actually. Burnley, uh, Bath are two teams, in fact. I don't want to talk too much about it because we will cover this in our boys in green. Uh, that will be a separate video, but uh, you know, 90 minutes and a five nil win over Cardiff. Apparently Brentford wants him. I think it's 14 million pounds. Uh, they want for him. And Brentford like, no, we're not going to pay that. It's something along those lines. I know, but it is very worrying from a Premier League point of view. And that is it. That's the Premier League ground up. So yes. Uh, sorry about that. That's probably brought you down a little bit. Right, let's move it on to the next bit and take it closer to home. And that is the Dublin Derby between Bohemians and Shamrock Rovers will be moved to a morning kickoff due to a co-play concert. This is not a Waterford Whispers uh, story. Uh, this is real life. This is actually happening. I'm just going to read the bit here from the Daily Mirror. Uh, the League of Ireland match was originally scheduled for a 7.45 start on uh, Friday the 30th of August at Dedimont Park in Dublin. But on the instruction of the guards, whose resources will be stretched by Coplay's concert in Crow Park on the same date, the Dublin Derby has been moved to 11.30am on Sunday. Uh, the article actually says Monday. 
September 1st, but I believe, yes, it's a Sunday. First September is a Sunday. Uh, so, yeah, it's been moved to 11.30 a.m. on a Sunday, um, September 1st. Uh, in a statement on social media, Bohemia said, we are aware that the kickoff time is far from, ide- far from ideal for supporters, but which for which we apologise, but on the instruction of the guards, owing to resources required for the Co-Play's concert in Croke Park on the same date, we were left with no other option. Uh, so Co-Play have uh, four, four dates. Uh, they play Croke Park on the 29th, the 30th of August, and then the 1st and 2nd September. So they've moved it. So yeah, it finishes up on Monday, the 2nd of September. So that's why they put it to uh, 11.30 kickoff. How the hell did Co-Play for a start get four dates at Croke Park without civil war breaking out on Jones's Road? God, do you remember when you two tried to get a, got three dates there in, uh, I think it's 2009, and they started blocking in the trucks uh, the, the the locals um anyway why move next to a stadium but uh yeah so there you have it um irish football gets uh, a boot in the bollocks once again really um and that's what it is isn't it irish football suffers it always suffers you know you got shamrock rovers there now both aren't having a great season but shamrock rovers there have just qualified for group stage european football no matter what happens in the next game. And and like worth three million quid to them. Fantastic stuff. Wasn't shown on telly. The game wasn't shown on telly. St. Pat's as well. Got a, a fantastic uh win. Not guaranteed group stage football yet. Could do if they win, I believe they get their win their next um tie. Wasn't shown on telly, it was just shown on League of Ireland. LOI TV, I believe. Um look, this isn't a League of Ireland podcast. I don't know enough about it. I, I'm not I wouldn't I wouldn't dare to try and uh lecture you on it. Um it's not Nelson Road is not a League of Ireland page, but every now and again we'll dip into it and go, look, this is fantastic, this is brilliant, well done. Um but yet again it's Irish football just getting the the shit out of the stick. And I think it's it's unfortunate. It's always the way. Eleven thirty on a Sunday is ridiculous. Um it'll be a quiet game. <laughs> quite a quiet game for the quiet day for the guards, but I I just think that is we're sort of just I mean, they they want to. You know, people talk about us hosting major events here in this country. Can't even host four four shows in a football match. You know, in Dalyman Park. You know, I I could understand maybe if it was an international, it was like forty fifty thousand Ireland fans or whatever. Well, with the current uh, attendances, I don't know. Maybe, um, but. Do you know what I mean? It's it, it's ridiculous, and, and these guys are talking about hosting the Olympics. Oh yeah, we got all these facilities. Look, maybe I'm a, I'm a bit spoiled. I live in London, and in London, you know, you've got several Premier League matches going on. You got first division or championship ma- matches going on. You got concerts going on. You got the West End going on, and it all seems to run smoothly unless there's like a train strike. Then it all goes to shit. But it just seems a bit ridiculous that. You know, Irish football gets it again. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm a bit biased there, but I just think it's wrong. Um, you know, especially when Irish football is really should be aided. It shouldn't be, you know, it needs help. It, it doesn't need any more um, roadblocks. And official Ireland, yet again, strikes, but there you go. Um, madness. Uh, final topic is... Uh, Jack Charlton's son, John Charlton, uh, talks about his dad, who um, he says was a proud Englishman, but he'd be rooting for Ireland uh, in September if he was uh, still alive. Bless him. Icon son says before emotional journey to special spot. Obviously, talking about Nan's down road here. Um, we'll have a look for you here. Just to read the article from a red top paper. Um. But uh, yeah, he basically just talks here about how um, he's going to go to the game. John is, which is fantastic. Um, I'm sure he'll get a fantastic reception there. He was the kit man for Ireland. Or he was one of the kit. Well, Charlie O'Leary was the kit man, wasn't he? But uh, he he was one of the. He used to work with Charlie, I believe. <laughs> John sort of boys. Uh, but this is what he had to say anyway. Uh, I'm coming over for the England game with my son, who has never been. 
Jack's grandson, which is great. We are both really looking forward to it. It should be a great occasion. Ireland is very special to a family. We're still in touch with many people in Ireland. We have many fond memories of what my dad achieved there. My mum and dad both had Irish passports as well as their British ones, and that's the one they always used. I'd imagine the Irish one. And asked if um, who would Jack have been rooting for, and he says, no doubt, the Irish. Um, my dad was a proud Englishman and had great success, but his time with Ireland was something special. Ideally, he would have wanted both countries to qualify, but he'd want Ireland to get a result against England. Oh. Uh, of course, that is on the 7th of September, our first competitive game uh, against England since 1991, March 91, and the first competitive game in Dublin since 14th of November. 1990 um yeah and we will be there we will be live um for those games we will as always we will have our stream from the stadium just before kickoff and just after the final whistle we'll let you guys have your say so do follow us um for the nations league and as you can see here, I still haven't updated the picture, but uh, it is a five o'clock kickoff and you can get, still get your UEFA Nations League match pack. I'll put the link for that if you still want it, if you want the tickets in to the link here. But yes, we will be playing England with an Irishman in charge of England, Lee Carsley. It's mad, isn't it? It's absolutely mad. So we have an Icelandic fella in charge of Ireland who plays England. who's got an Irish fella in charge. There you go. But we will be there. And of course, the squad is going to be announced over the next few days. We will be live for that as well. We'll have a live reaction here on the Facebook, the YouTube and the Twitter channels as well. Uh, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much. Uh, just a short one today. Don't forget, we will have our Boys in Green Volume 2, our number two, uh, coming out over the next couple of days. That will have a look at the entire squad. Had the entire squad gone on over match day two, I suppose? match day two of the league um yes because the championship started last week so there you go and uh we'll tell you how all of our squad players got on and also some bridge players so it's all there anyway it's all here on the youtube channel so give us a cheek subscribe go on scan that qr code head over to a facebook instagram youtube if you're not on it and if you want opinion or an audio version of this podcast uh, head over to lansonroar.e that is lansonroar.e anyway i'm out of here uh, we'll see you on the next one hopefully in the not too distant future and uh yeah good night and god bless <laughs>